sacrifice of praise as it is we're going to preach into the house of the Lord. We bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Genesis chapter 42, verse 43, I'm sorry, because I keep shifting. 43, verse 11, in the name of the Lord. And this is Job, this is Israel, or Jacob, as he's talking to his sons. Amen. When they're getting prepared to go back into Egypt, under their brother, whom they did not know and recognize, as the prime minister of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Amen. They thought he was a tough, cold, cruel, hardy, hard, hard, mean, mean man 
who demanded a lot of them when he was their brother. He was Joseph. He could have been really, really cruel because of what they did to him. But he just didn't want them to recognize him, so he was very rough with his brothers. And he didn't want them looking at him. Who that dude looked like Joseph? He was very rough with them and hard. And he demanded things that they could not produce. And he locked one of them up in prison and said, you're spies. That's why you're in this land. And they were begging and pleading. No, we came down for food and all this. He told them, I don't trust you. I'm keeping one of you here. So he took his little brother, with one next to his little brother, and put him in prison. And then the rest of you go home. And these were, this was Jacob's word to the son, to the sons that they were getting ready to go back. Je Genesis 43 and 11. And their father, he's now called Israel, but his first name was Jacob. Said unto them, if it must be so. In other words, if you must go back into e Egypt and do these things to get my son back. If it must be so, do this. This is fatherly instructions. Mm -hmm. He said, take the best of the fruits in the land in your vessels. And carry down the man, the prime minister of Egypt, which was his son. He didn't know it either. A present. And he told him how to put it together. I want you to put it together in this order. A little balm, a little honey, mm -hmm. spices, pick as many spices as you want. He didn't give no quantity. He said spices, good smelling stuff, myrrh, mm -hmm. which was put on the feet of Jesus by whom? Mary. Mm -hmm. Amen. And nuts and almonds. Amen. And to see here that he wasn't finished, look at verse 12. I wanted to stop at 11, but I wanted to, 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 uh, to read it off. And take double money in your hand. And the money that was brought again in the mouth of the sack. In other words, take three times the money that you went with the first time. Amen. Amen. And again, in the mouth of your sacks, carry it again in your hands. Three adventure, which means perhaps it was an oversight. And take also your brother and arise and go again unto the man. Amen. And God Almighty give you mercy before the man that he may send away your brother Benjamin. But if I be bereaved, bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. Yeah. He was settled in the issue. Mm -hmm. But he said we're going to do everything diplomatically, present-wise, everything to satisfy this man some way, somehow, and get my son out of jail. Yeah. So we praise God. Balm. There's a balm in Gideon. All right? Next verse, next chapter is Jeremiah the 8th chapter. Jeremiah the prophet. <clears throat> Eighth chapter. Amen. Jeremiah, the eighth chapter. Amen. Glory to God. Are we there? Amen. It reads one reading only one scripture. Is there a bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the help? of the daughter of my people recovered or healed. Amen. God was asking that. Mm -hmm. Amen. To see you, to see how his heart felt. Look at verse 20, and I'm going to go all the way back, but I want to see how God looks at things. He said, the harvest is past, which should have been a celebration time in Israel. But God had, had judged their harvest. He stopped the land from producing like it should. He said, well, the harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. They were in captivity. Mm -hmm. Assyrian captivity. Mm -hmm. Amen. And God went on to say, For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I'm black. I'm in mourning. When the day, those days the Jews wore black, totally black outfits when they were in mourning. Yeah. Like Johnny Cash. Black from head to toe almost. Black hat, black boots. Johnny Cash wore that thing. Made him look like some of these wrestlers on TV. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, uh, but he was, Donny Cash was all right. He was a Christian man, and he had a belief in God and all of that, and his wife did too. Amen. But the Lord is saying here, because of your sins, because of the judgment I had to bring yes. upon you, yes. even God said, I'm in mourning. Yes. He said, uh, for the hurt of the daughter, the damage done by his judgment, daughter of my people, I'm hurt. I'm offended. I'm, I mean, I'm almost like I'm in black walking among you. And astonishment has taken hold on me. Mm -hmm. Then he asked Israel, is there any place you can go where you can get help? Is there no bomb in Gilead? 
Is there no physician there? Why then is the health of my daughter, of my people, daughter of my people, um, not recovered? Amen. All right, Revelation, last scripture. God is talking to the church type of our age. Yes. Every one of the seven churches in the book of Revelation that John wrote and preached to, prophesied to in chapter 2, 3, and chapter 2 and 3, each one of them was a type of the church, churches in the ages and years that God allowed to exist. And of course, the last church was the church of Laodicea. Mm -hmm. Amen. And this it's amazing. This, this church came out of a rich city. They were prosperous, Sister Raquel. Everybody basically had jobs. It was a rich city. There was gold in the place. It was a city of commerce. Amen. And so the people living there, they weren't poor. They remind me of folks like, like in a college town, I uh, uh, can't even in Coleman in California. Uh, when I hit that city, I started noticing the cars and San, San, what's it called? San, not San Jose. No. Anyway, anyway, I was there and I went into the city and I noticed the cars. Andy Porsches, big German BMWs. It wasn't no little old Chevy Blaze or Chevy Leaf or whatever. And folks, and what really got my attention, Sister Raquel, we were, me and my fellows, we were down there, uh, I was working for the state, and some of the other people was working for the state, we was down there for a conference, a conference on addiction. And uh, I can almost see the town. But uh, what I saw, we said, let's go get something to eat. We found the fast food places, and here's what I saw. They would, people would drive up to the fast food place downtown, and they would get out and hand their key to the bellhop. I said, are you kidding me? McDonald's? And that's what happened. They would get in the car, that car would disappear. I stood there for a moment. People would walk out, they'd get on their cell phone. I don't know how a few seconds later, mm -hmm. Porsche, get out and hand the key to the fire guy, mm -hmm. all be gone. I said, you gotta be joking me, McDonald's? Amen, got, got a person who parks your cars? But it was so. So that city was a blessed city. So was the Odyssey. But the Lord said to them here in the 16th, in the 17th verse, I'm going to read 17 to 19. He said to the Laodicean, to Laodicean saints and the Christian church, Christian of the church, he says, after he had chastised them a little bit above, you read from verse 14 to 16 to get it all. He said, because thou sayest, they have an opinion that they were okay. Jesus said, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods. That was the economy of the city, community of Laodicea. And have no need of nothing. That's the deceitfulness of riches. Riches will trick you. They will take hold of your mind when you are not even thinking that they will. And they will tell you, you don't need to go to church. Check yourself. You feel fine. God is with you because you are blessed. And you will pronounce blessings upon yourself while you are in disobedient, while you are being disobedient to God. So God just rehearsed what they were thinking. Brother Reynolds, Revelation chapter number 3, verse 17 to 19. He said, Because thou sayest, I am rich and increase with goods, and have need of nothing, and know it not. Here's what they didn't realize, their spiritual condition. Know it not that thou art wretched and miserable. Watch these added adjectives. And poor and blind and naked. God said, I'm going to be nice to you. I'm going to counsel you. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. That goal that Peter was talking about, which is our faith. He said, though your faith be tried, once it goes through fire, it comes out like pure gold. Mm -hmm. Jesus referenced that here. He said, that thou mayest be rich in spiritual things, and white raiment, be, mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that thy shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thy eyes with eye sand, that thou mayest see. And then the Lord said, here's the conclusion of the whole matter. As many as I love, you, church of Laodicea, I rebuke, that's what he was doing there, and chasten. He told